What's going on guys? Big BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got Lewis's 40 terabyte ultimate console. That right there is plug and play. And he's got aim tracks on it. He's got everything. All right, guys, you know me, I'm gonna always say it. If you aren't following me, why are you not following me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP? If you were following me, you would basically see the whole story behind this entire build. This one is insane. So let me give you a quick rundown on what this is exactly. This is an ultimate console. If you haven't seen my videos on it, you'll definitely go back, you could see all the details that I build something called an ultimate console. It is basically a plug and play PC. Yes, that is an ultimate console. It'll play everything, PS2, PS1, PS3, 360, the Wii, the Switch, arcade stuff, gun games, PC games, everything. If you look at my Hyperspin Drive video, no BS, no fillers, only serious gaming systems. Me personally, I am 32, so I know I know like the Atari, I know the NES, the Super NES, that was really my first console was the NES. I do not put BS fillers on my Hyperspin drives. Again, you'll see all Hyperspin videos. I got a couple coming up. It's either gonna come up after this video or before it. I'm not too sure. I honestly shot those videos last night and now I'm working on getting Lewis's ultimate console shipped out to him. Now again, if you look at the Hyperspin videos, you'll see my whole ordeal with people selling drives and it's plug and play. No, it is never plug and play. I don't care who you are. You could prove it to me. I don't, I don't care. I'll still tell you that it is not plug and play. I am the type of person that I want to sell you and I want, I want you to receive something that is officially 100,000% plug and play. What does that mean? Lewis right here sent me his PC. That is his PC. I did not build that PC. He sent me his PC. He goes, Vic, I want an ultimate console. I said, bet, give me about 30 days and we'll get it done. And there you guys have it. He sent me his PC. I don't do drives. I don't sell drives. I don't tell you, hey, put this drive in and assign it to the letter E. I do not do that. I am the type of person that I wanna test every single system. You're looking at 91 systems in Hyperspin, 91. Again, you'll take a look at my Hyperspin video. You'll see it's no bullshit. It is 91 systems. What does that mean? There's a good, amount of emulators to test and assign everyone's build is different whether you're going to get an arcade cabinet from me or if you're going to get an ultimate console which uses xbox controllers every build is different and just like that i have to either assign the emulators to the arcade sticks or to xbox controllers and again i'm the type of person that i want to sell you and i want you to officially get something that is plug and play so now real quick let's take a look at the main details on lewis's build uh, I'll go into a little bit of a story of how he messaged me and what happened and uh, I'll go over a couple of things and we'll actually do a whole screenshot, a uh, screen capture um, of the actual system. The best thing and the craziest thing for this customer is he is m getting my official gun wheel. He said, Vic, I have aim tracks. He did not send me these aim tracks originally on his first delivery. So he sent me about two or three weeks later, these aim tracks. And I said, you know what, dude? If you got the patience, give me about a week. I'm gonna basically make a gun wheel. And he said, Vic, have at it. So thank you, Lewis, for that. You are the only one that officially has a gun wheel on my hyperspin drive. So amazing, amazing stuff. So now real quick, let's go over the exact system that he has. Again, he supplied me the computer. I'll go into details on what I could offer you, but to save money, he supplied me the computer. You're looking at an i5, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and he's running a 2080, an RTX 2080 on this. One terabyte M.2 SSD for his boot and Hyperspin emulator files are in that SSD. And he's got four 12 terabyte hard drives, standard Seagate kind of hard drives and all that. You don't need SSDs for all the ROMs. He technically has 48 terabytes in this, really 49. 49 terabytes in this system. Big thing though is that when you do get a 12 terabyte drive, after it's kind of initialized and formatted, you only get 10.8 terabytes. 
I basically refined my hyperspin drive. Originally it was 42 terabytes. I kind of removed a couple of duplicates and now I'm down to 40 terabytes. He basically has four terabytes open, which is pretty good. From what I've learned and from what other customers tell me, you do need space for stuff such as extracting and also if you're gonna save files and all that. No file saves don't take up 40, four terabytes, but it's always good to have. I personally never have each drive go under 500 gigs. So out of a 10.8 terabyte drive on the C drive, if you go and look at the drives, every drive does not exceed or have left under 500 gigs. Only because again, extracting does happen and saving. So you don't really want any hiccups or anything about saying, hey, out of memory, I always leave at least 500 gigs open on each drive. Now again, on his build, he has two Xbox One controllers with the official Xbox dongle and he's got two aim tracks. Um, again, awesome. Awesome, awesome stuff. The aim tracks have a very long cord. Um, he basically is gonna hook this up to a 70 inch screen. I did give him a heads up. I said, I don't know how the aim tracks are gonna work with 70 inch. He'll let me know. This right now is a 50 inch and he also does have a 55 inch at home. So this 50 inch does work and I do have the aim track light bar above and we're gonna do some gameplay and all that too. Now when Lewis originally messaged me, he actually messaged me on YouTube and he was looking at my hyperspin. He actually commented on the hyperspin 2020 video and he's like, I want this. And I told him the whole thing, I gave him a whole spiel. I can either give you an entirely built PC. Me personally, the PCs I use are i7, 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, depending on the deal I get. And now current gen hardware, which is either a 3060 or higher. He's running a 2080. On uh, my personal 40 terabyte ultimate console, I'm running a 2070. So. The 2000 series does work. His, as you can see, does work great. He's able to even play in 4K, but he requested 1080p. You could set this to 4K, it's very easy, but in his situation, he wanted 1080p. Now, it's kind of crazy, while we're going back and forth on Instagram Messenger, he told me that his friend built this computer, and he told me that he had a 3080. Maybe it was a typo, but upon when I got it, it was a 2080 that's inside of this. Now it's kind of crazy, his friend built it and that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I messaged him, I said, dude, I don't know who built it. The wiring was like not clean. The, the wiring is not, not clean at all. But the friend put a one terabyte, not even a 72,000 RPM hard drive in it. I got it, I booted it up and it literally, and you see it in the video actually, I made a video of when I got this and I unboxed it. The boot was like a minute to a minute and a half and I was like, dude, this is why you need an M.2 SSD. When he gets this and he boots it up, Max, you're looking at at least 15 seconds, it'll all boot up. That's what's so awesome with current gen stuff and that is why I always suggest at least a one terabyte M.2 SSD for boot. Now this is kind of where customization really happens. This is where I basically will try to help the customer any way I can. This case is big. This is a big case. It's heavy too. I'm not gonna BS you. It's heavy, it's got a lot of stuff going on, it's got water cooling, it's an all-in-one. But what's shocking with this case is that it only has two hard drive bay. That means that you can only put two hard drives in it. With me, obviously, I'm like, dude, this case is big. When I, when he, when I first got it and I saw two hard drive bays, I, I was like, dude, I might have to put the hard drives underneath the bottom of this case, kind of like exposed visually. And he was like, Vic, whatever you gotta do, make it happen. I said, you know what? Let me really dig in and try to figure out what I could do. And me, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I was able to hide the other two hard drives in the rear. Uh, I'm contemplating if I, I'll open it. I'll open it to show you guys. But the craziest thing, and that's where it gets kind of difficult when a customer sends me his stuff. You look at the size of this case and it's big. This case is bigger than my personal ultimate console, and my personal ultimate console can hold four uh, hard drives, regular hard drives, and two um, SSDs, 2.5. And I'm like, dude, this is so big, why can't this fit at least four bays? But it is what it is, but your boy, I got it in, I, I, I got it. I got it, it is well hidden, it looks beautiful. You wouldn't even guess that there was 48 terabytes in this thing. 
So now I just removed the side panel. This is the rear panel. And there you could see the customization on it. Again, two 12 terabytes are here. This kind of has like a nice slide here in the rear, but these are not supposed to be here, but they are bolted in. They're not going anywhere. Yes, in all honesty, I am in front of the radiator for this one, but it's not that drastic. Again, I had to do what I had to do. I did try to put this drive underneath here, but the connections kind of clashed. Cleaned up the wiring because again, his friend, whoever put it, it wasn't like, it wasn't clean. It doesn't look that clean right now, but listen, I got four hard drives in a two hard drive case. There you have it. So now with that being said, let us boot up the system. I'll put a timer down. We'll see how long it takes. Again, keep in mind, it is also booting up four hard drives on it. Basically all the stuff that he has, like as far as connections, he does have one. That's what's so great about these. This is an official Xbox dongle for the controllers, the Xbox controllers. One dongle can control or hook up to six controllers. So he only supplied me two controllers. Essentially, if he did want to add two more, I just like, I kind of just team viewer in and kind of assign a couple of emulators. But all in all, he's got that. And I always suggest to have its own keyboard on it. Uh, sadly though, we're booted. Not sadly on that, but we are booted right now. I, right now, all the time when I send out these ultimate consoles, I no longer boot directly into Hyperspin. I could do that if you want. It's just a lot of people that I contact now and that do get these ultimate consoles, they are streamers. So most of the time people kind of want to go into like OBS and I do have that already set in here, meaning it's already downloaded, it's not set up. But a lot of times they do have streamers, they want to launch OBS or Again, what the beauty of this is you have a current gen PC. You're able to play current gen games. Like if you wanted to play Call of Duty Warzone or if you wanted to play Fortnite or Apex Legends, it's in this. That's what is ultimate about this. This is the ultimate gaming machine. It is the ultimate console. It'll play everything. So again, some people do have this. And for example, Lewis does have, I believe, two kids um, old enough, I guess, to play Call of Duty. You know. It's kind of a nuisance to launch it to hyperspin and then you got to exit. So I basically have it set now where it kind of just goes to desktop mode and then you, the customer, will figure out what you want to play. So I right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down. We're going to actually do a couple of gameplay, but I'd rather do that with the screen capture part. I right now want to take this time to show off the guns, the gun wheel and all that. So right now, again, I do have a wireless keyboard and mouse hooked up. I'm going to basically turn on one of my Xbox controllers. Or if you was going to have two players, you could put two players on. Either way, you just have to use one or two. And I always suggest do have an Xbox controller on and launch Hyperspin. Everything is on this controller. You don't need a keyboard to navigate Hyperspin. Everything works with the controller. Before he starts gun games, I do suggest that you plug in the aim tracks. So luckily his PC and a lot of current cases you do have the USB ports right in the front. And I will label it before these go out because he has two red guns. I'll label which one is set to player one. It's all coded and such. He also does have the recoil on them, but he didn't send me the pack. He did tell me one recoil doesn't work, but it didn't matter to me because I didn't, I didn't recoil. It just, it goes off the trigger. So now that I have the aim track set, I'm going to go into gun games. Again, I'm going to use my Xbox controller. My gun wheel right now, I believe it was 173 games uh, in total. I have the whole video on it. Um, and I did mention to him, I said, dude, you sent me like this at the perfect time because you now have the Blue Estate two player hack. You got um, House of Dead remake and all that. So it's pretty cool. Again, all the gun games, I'm missing a video here and there, but that's easy. I could always send it to him later on. I'd rather him game on with it. So in this wheel, I do have MAME, I do have um, Model 2, Model 3, you do have also Techno Parrot, the Sega Ring Edge, Tato Type X stuff, and all that. So just for kicks, just for now, um, we, I'm trying to think of a regular game that is two players. Uh, I was playing like Area 51. So long press on the A, and the game will launch. I have that set on purpose. You have to hold down A, which is your enter. Instead of just tapping it, you might accidentally tap it and all that. With my personal, this is a main game, 
I have the coin and start set to the actual aim track. So the right button is the coin. Again, same thing on player two. And aiming at the screen, it will start. So again, you don't need the keyboard and mouse or the Xbox controllers for MAME arcade stuff. I'm right now gonna step back. I'm gonna actually bring the camera back. Just so you guys can grab me. And again, what's so great with these aim tracks is you can see the length on it. Obviously his computer's not gonna be on the desk like that, but I do have the sensor bar up top here. And on an aim track, you do need them up top. And basically, let's see if I press player two start, as you can see, um, in it. All screen reload for Area 51, it's best to aim right at the top of the screen and you'll get the reload on. I do have the volume low and I have the baby crying, so I might have to go up there real quick. <laughs> That's A-OK. -okay. But as you can see, two players do work. And again, the big thing with aim tracks, I'm right now, as you can see, I'm a good six feet away from the screen and it's good. I, I enjoy the aim on this. This is perfectly fine. Awesome, right? Now, if he's done playing, again, coin buttons on the right, and you have to point at the screen and trigger that start. If you're pointing like this and trying to start, it won't work. You have to point at the screen, okay? Now, let's say he's done playing. Xbox controller, you hold down the Xbox logo, it brings you right back into hyperspin. That is ultimate, yes. Yes, I try not to use the keyboard and mouse. It's all coding and stuff like that. You do always wanna have a keyboard and mouse handy. Let me go get the baby. All right, sorry about that, you know how the baby is. So one thing real quick, you don't really wanna ditch the keyboard and mouse. It's always good to have it kind of handy just in case anything happens. But I do wanna launch now, for example, the House of the Dead original, which is an M2 game, Sega Model 2. Um, on a game like this, for example, you do use the Xbox controller to insert coins and press start. So you could press the select button and it'll insert the coins and then start will start the game. So player one start and then player two start. So yes, you do need both Xbox controllers to start player one and player two. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the aim tracks to work like that, but all in all, we are a-okay. So reload is on the left trigger. And as you can see, we do have dual aim tracks here. I like the aim tracks. I have no problem with the aim tracks. Yes, gun for IR is way better, but in all honesty, for the price of an aim track, it works, it, it works. And again, as you can see how far I am from it, I don't really have that much of an issue as far as aim or any disconnects. I'm, I'm enjoying it, it's awesome. and. Like I said, that right there, if you're done, you hold down the Xbox button and it brings back, you have to hold it down for about at least three seconds. I have it set up like that, just so you don't accidentally exit and such. Uh, same thing with kind of like PC games. If I hold down A, it's gonna launch the game. Again, I have that long hold set on purpose. This way there's no accidental. Way in the beginning when I was doing hyperspin, you had a couple people that would accidentally start a game and it's like, ah, oh, I gotta wait for it to load and all that. But, Last one we'll do real quick and then we'll go on to game capture. And again, I'm gonna definitely label the gun front because he has two red. So one will be player one, one will be player two. They are already, they are kind of hard coded. And again, I have the volume off because baby's sleeping, but definitely it is a awesome feeling. This is just awesome. It's, it's great. I, I can't stress it enough. So again, he's got both light guns, player one and player two. Awesome. And again, uh, this game particularly does have Ray's AHK file. So if I do hold the Xbox button, it does exit and it brings back the focus. That is, whew, yes, that is just awesome. I love everything about it. Let's bring this computer down and we'll connect it and let's get some kind of gameplay and tutorials ready. Alright guys, so we have basically the computer connected to my personal streaming setup. Uh, figure we're going to take this as like a tutorial, honestly. Um, if you're looking at like main actual systems and really seeing like what's in this, I do have a Hyperspin 2022 video 
Again, I, I don't know if it's going to come out before this video or after this video, but it will be very close to either or. So I'm going to really take this as like for Lewis as a tutorial and you can kind of basically also tag along and watch how the system runs. So the big thing again, once you launch the PC, you're going to get into the desktop. I personally don't put any images on the desktop. Um, I did have one customer that wanted to put those animated backgrounds. You could do that. Just keep in mind that stuff eats at your PC, at your CPU. So adding that is cool, but you might experience some stutter. Like me personally, I'd rather just have a straight black image or, or any color you want and just not have to worry about anything eating up your CPU and all that. So on the desktop, you have some basic, basic stuff. Battle.net is for uh, Call of Duty. I'm actually going to pause. It's going to show his Gmail account, so hold on. I don't want people to see the, the gamer tag and all that. But this, I do have Battle.net on this, so he is able to play Call of Duty Warzone on it. He even does have Epic Games. I'm right now, the computer is not connected to the internet. A little downside on his personal PC, there is no Wi-Fi card on the actual motherboard. You could get those wireless dongles, but unfortunately you have to be hardwired. I don't have internet connected to it. So Epic Games is for Fortnite and also Epic Games does release free games. I, I basically explained this in my Hyperspin 2022 video. So it's pretty cool. You take advantage of it and you download it. Those games do not show up in Hyperspin. So keep that in mind. Warzone, Fortnite, Apex Legends, which is Origin that uses it. You're not going to see those games in the actual Hyperspin wheel. Why? Because you do need to launch Battle.net to launch Warzone. So just to make your life easy, all that stuff, you just kind of come to the desktop and launch it outside of Hyperspin. The only kind of one thing that he'll experience, and I'll put the Dolphin here, is the Dolphin emulator because of the Wii. Basically, there's a couple of Wii games that it's the Wiimote normal and then the Wiimote sideways. And unfortunately, Dolphin doesn't have a shortcut to switch between. And again, I'll explain the tutorial and I'll show Lewis now what he has to do. There's some Dolphin games like Paper Mario that you have to turn the Wiimote. And that translates to turning the Xbox controller sideways, which you don't want to do to play it like that unless you want to make your life easy and play like that. But basically, you have to just go into Dolphin and configure the controls. You have to do that. And the one thing now that I always do for all my customers, because I do get a lot of streamers, is I do have OBS Studio. So I have it already set to capture your screen and you have to set up Twitch and all that or YouTube on your own, but it is a powerful PC. That's why I don't do these Dell Optiplexes. That's why I always suggest current gen stuff. He has two kids. One of them might, be, might, might wanna be a streamer. So what's really great about this system is this is just complete and again it's so future proof if the family wants to play current gen pc games that come out new games they could do it this is again the ultimate console we're going to start with the tutorial let's go with the basics we're going to launch hyperspin the big thing is try to determine if you're going to play with one player or two player you always need one xbox controller on obviously or if you're going to play two players you might as well save your time and turn on the second one. I'll just do that just for kicks. Even if you don't use the second player, it's just good to have it on. With your mouse and keyboard, you're gonna double click hyperspin and it'll launch. Big thing is basically I have it set that you're gonna use the Xbox controller or you could use the keyboard, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna use the Xbox controller. I'm a big firm person on using the D-pad. Using the analog stick is cool, but sometimes you might accidentally hit like the left and the right and it'll basically skip letters. It's kind of a tedious thing. I always suggest using the D-pad. Now, basic stuff, if you wanna play, let's say Super Nintendo, you're gonna long press A, and it'll go into the sub wheel. If you wanna go back, you have to hold down the right trigger. That is the best way. Do not hold down the Xbox button. For some reason, you lose focus. It's only in hyperspin you could do that. Again, long press A. I even have the back button set up to exit or bring it back. So you could press the back button or I always do the right trigger. And there you go. Again, if you go into a system and you hold down the Xbox controller, the Xbox logo, you will lose focus. In game, you are going to use the Xbox logo to exit out. 
Why do I have that set up? Because in game, you rarely, you never touch the Xbox controller. So to alleviate any confusion or accidental exits, it's the Xbox controller. So as you can see right now, I launched the game. I'm done playing it. I long press the Xbox controller and I'm back. Again, flawless. That's what I like. Oh, we got the baby. <laughs> I'll be right back again. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. That's just part of fatherhood. <laughs> but yes, the big thing is that in game, while you're playing the game, you're going to hold down the Xbox button to exit out. But in hyperspin, you're going to hold down either the right trigger or you could press the back button too. Honestly, about, I would say 95% of the systems here, easy, flawless, in and out, in and out. There's only just one thing about the Nintendo Switch I'm going to discuss, where basically when you exit a Switch game, it kind of just takes about 30 seconds to regain focus back to hyperspin. Other than that, it's flawless. It's, it's, it's flawless. Loving everything about it. So again, long press. I want to play some NES. I want to play my favorite Super Mario World 3, uh, Super Mario 3, I should say, Super Mario World 3. We're going to go to S. Again, using the D-pad, I'm going to launch Super Mario 3. Long press on that A, and it'll launch. The big thing I always tell people is you don't want to, like, quickly go up and down on the D-pad and then pull down A, kind of let the wheel stop and then go. So as you can see, we're able to play some Mario 3. And again, everything already pre-configured to the controllers it's just something that i sit down and i test on every single one so again i am right now using the xbox controller i'm able to game i'm able to enjoy the hell out of this when i'm done long press that xbox logo once you see the screen go black let it go and you have focus that's the big thing again i could press the back button or again the r trigger and we bring it back. Awesome. Let's do some, I don't know, some GameCube. Me, personally, I do plan to play a lot of GameCube on a couple of streams. Uh, I don't know, NHL hits. Awesome. Cool. Long press on the A. Some of the games like GameCube, as you can see, it does extract. So it takes a couple of seconds. I believe I only have that set to GameCube and PS2. That's because the ROM is actually zipped. To save hard drive space, some of the ROMs are zipped. So, for example, GameCube... You just got to let it load. It's nothing drastic. It doesn't kill you. It doesn't hurt you. Oh, but Vic, uh, I bought a one, dot, one terabyte M.2 drive for speed. Yes, but keep that in mind. Again, some of the games are zipped. If you think this is long, wait until you see the PS3. The PS3 games do take a minute or two to load up. But all in all, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's an amazing feeling when I complete these. And it just makes me feel great knowing that Lewis is going to get this and it's going to be plug and play. He's just got to plug it in, grab his controllers and game on. That is why I, I do this. That is exactly why I do not do hard drives. I don't, people think like the drives, you could just plug them in and it, no. Uh, I know a couple of guys, some great guys that do drives. Um, one, for example, is Joel from Retro Lizard. Give him a shout out. Um, you know, him in the gun drive, he logs in, but he's got to log in and, you know, it takes some time. He's going to configure it for you. That's great of him. Luckily, we have him and people like that and me that will log in and configure it. But you try getting that with your uh, eBay sellers. Again, using the Xbox controllers, we do have GameCube action. And again, as you can see, I'm able to play. Once I'm done, long press the Xbox logo. Once you see the game exit out, just let it go. And again, I'm a big fan of using the right trigger. And game on. I mean, as you can see right now, we're bouncing from systems. We're bouncing from emulators. And yet, to kind of experience any kind of headaches whatsoever. Let's, I don't know, some Transformers. Awesome. Now, again, you do have the 3DS and the DS. Those are handheld. So as you can see, you have one big screen. And then on the bottom right is actually a touchpad. So you will need the mouse for the handheld, such as that. As you can see, my mouse here. That's real 3DS and DS hardware. Once I'm done, long press the Xbox button, and I'm back. That was the big thing, is just regaining focus. And again, it takes trial and error to make sure all that runs. And cool. So I'm going to do real quick like the Wii. I always, I always try to show off like different games, 
I'm always like, you know, the type that's going to show, you know, Mario Galaxy and all that. Um, I will definitely show Paper Mario because that is one that needs the, the, um, the D-pad flipped. I believe there was a new Super Mario. I like, I always try to keep it with Mario because Mario is just basic and easy stuff that it kind of loads quickly. Um, again, there's just so many games. And on, on my site, you can see how many games each system has. Uh, I'm going to go to T. I'll probably go up. I'm basically just looking for like, see, Super Mario Galaxy, uh, Super Mario All-Stars. Uh, uh, uh. Again, most majority of the logos are there. I believe there was like a Super Mario World. I mean, that was like kind of basic. Again, just trying to navigate. I just want to launch a game for you guys. I don't want to do Paper Mario because I know we're going to have the D-pad instruction for it. Um, I also want to play a game that I kind of know. Uh, Swiggle Pants? <laughs> All right, let's do SpongeBob. Screw it. Creature from the Krusty Krab. So long press that and we boot up. The nunchuck is already set to this, so it's basically um, left is as if it's the IR and the right analog stick is the nunchuck, or it's reversed. I might have said that wrong, but it's already pre-configured and set. You don't have to worry about anything with that. And able to play some Wii, that's all it is. And again, I'm using the left analog stick. So actually the left analog stick is the, um, is the nunchuck. I'm not gonna do a new game. Long press, bring it back, and we're good to go. Awesome, awesome. He's got the new, my updated PC stuff. Uh, you even got PSP on this, PS2. I'm gonna do the PS3 and the 360, but he does have the new PC games wheel. This basically is arcade style and multiplayer games. If you had arcade sticks, 90 to 95 percent of the games would work with arcade sticks the rest are basically multiplayer games so for example like retro mania wrestling you could actually assign that to arcade sticks um i believe i do have yes i do have wwe 2k22 again long press that and enter all the pc games you have to exit in the game it doesn't use the escape key like all my other emulators. So, for example, and you don't want to accidentally do it. Sometimes you're playing a game and, you know, you escape out. For example, like House of the Dead, but that's different. You know, you don't want to accidentally hit escape and then you just exited the whole game. Lewis did ask me, he's like, Vic, do you have um, 2K on this? And as you can see, bud, you got it, my dude. Uh, basically going to go through the kind of licenses real quick <laughs> i'll probably skip this so i don't waste your time yes we're good to go now just remember though the pc games you don't have online play like you don't you can't play online but again what's so great with current gen stuff if he has a 70 inch screen if he wanted to play for example this game in 4k he could i mean there's no issue at all with it uh this right here honestly was very excited when they announced this because we all know that um what was it like 2k21 or 2k20 sucked ass this though is great and it's just again the ultimate console is is awesome i believe i'm trying to remember the most recent pc game that is on this again with the date of filming please look at the date somebody's gonna you know comment this and you know in 2024 and be like this isn't a recent game uh, you do have Elden Ring on this. You do have the God of War um, port. Uh, again, awesome, awesome stuff. I'm trying to skip this. Awesome. Look at this. This is just a beautiful looking game. Amazing stuff. Again, 16 gigs of RAM. He is running an i5. I suggest an i7. He's running an i5. And honestly, it's, it's good. It's good processing power. Awesome. There you guys have it. So now again, to exit, not restart the match. Huh. To exit back to Hyperspin, you have to exit the actual PC program like you would if you were going to go back to desktop mode. So we're going to go back, we're going to go back. And do I want to quit? Yes. Once I quit, it brings me back into Hyperspin and I'll be able to pick another game. 
As you can see, live, I didn't lose focus. Awesome. Bring it back. Uh, I do have the PC racing wheel, just to go over real quick. So PC games, these are all like PC games that you can't play with arcade sticks. They're basically story-based. So for example, God of War, the Grand Theft Auto series is on this. Basically, Grand Theft Auto 3 up to 5, including the definitive editions on it. Um, I was playing some Scarface. You even have like the retro stuff. Somebody commented, it was like, whoa, you have Roller Coaster Tycoon? Listen, I'm, I'm a 90s kid. I grew up on Roller Coaster Tycoon. And yes, it is here. So again, these are PC games. You could use the Xbox controller. Obviously, Roller Coaster Tycoon, you need the keyboard and mouse for, but you have the keyboard and mouse. No need to worry. Let me go real quick. This was another popular demand. PC racing games. It's about 35 games. This is the biggest one. Four is a four and four is a five. Long press, again, everything. Ah, oh, I love it, man. Everything on it. As you can see right now, four is a five. It, it, you have this screen, just let it do its thing. The big thing is that some of these PC games, you're gonna see right now, four is a five, that logo in the beginning, that's just how it is. So some of the games do that. For example, Street Fighter V, Tekken 7. So you're gonna kind of see like hyperspin freeze. You'll be like, what, what happened? Just gotta let it do its thing, and I'm telling you, it will launch. Long press that. Once you get the loading bar, just let it do its thing. It will launch. I wanna make sure I'm still recording. <laughs> so it's save time. It's basically gotta go in through your systems and optimize your PC. Uh, basically, like when I test these games, I kind of just launch like the first minute, and it's basically good. So you'll probably see right now. I'm gonna probably just go into like. The beginning of this game i guess but i wanted to cut the video because it took about two minutes to optimize the pc and i didn't want to waste your time so again forza horizon 5 um most recent racing game uh again i did say it in my hyperspin 2022 video i'm like oh i originally when i was doing pc wheels i only had one pc wheel with every game on it i'm now at four terabytes worth of pc games uh, it's, it is that crazy. Yes. And it's awesome. I mean, people play these things. It's Forza is an amazing game. Just keep in mind again, you cannot play these games online and we're going to get ready for some Forza five action. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to show up the game. Parts of stuff. This is just how the game starts. <laughs> I might have to cut this video again for Forza. I just want to start this race. <laughs> Look at the visual on this. Beautiful. <laughs> I played Forza 4, and my Forza 4 has all the DLCs, including like the Lego tag and all that. It's pretty cool. Here we go. So again, using the Xbox controller as is. I have to see swaying around just to the words. And yeah, I, I can drive. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna press pause. There's a speaker inside the Xbox controller? I just heard like a, a rumble. Exit to desktop. Yes. And again, you are now back into hyperspin. It is a thing of beauty. Uh, I also put phone here on this because I am making a guitar here of having a with a lot of extra here, so Clone Hero is the car hero. Uh, a lot of like speedrunners are playing with Clone Hero and all that. You could basically hook up a guitar to it, or you could use a keyboard. Pretty cool. You have basic stuff. This right now is basics and all that. Sega Ring Edge is my techno parrot, um, and I made a video on my Hyperspin 2022. You do have Techno Parrot games, and then you have Tato Type X. There are Techno Parrot games in Tato Type X. My Tato Type X wheel basically is games that do not need an emulator. So, for example, Tekken 7 is in my Tato Type X wheel. That originally was a Techno Parrot game, but you no longer need Techno Parrot to launch it. These are basically just being launched with back files. So, just nerding out right now. So again, you do have your current stuff. Some company calls this like Dave and Busters. It's the stupidest thing I ever heard. But if you're looking for the Dave and Busters wheel, there's these two. Combined. So it's the stupidest thing I ever heard. 
<laughs> so real quick, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just show you guys the PS3 stuff. The PS3, the big thing again is that it does compile shaders. Not all the PS3 games will work, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna pick a random game, we'll do Lego Indiana Jones. I'm gonna long press on A. And the big thing is that loading you're gonna hear the Hyperspin Girl say like, loading or uh, loading complete and you're just gonna get this this is just gonna stay here you just have to leave the system alone basically right now rcps3 is loading the screen will go white and then it's gonna compile shaders and it's gonna have this kind of loading bar you just gotta let it do its thing this probably is the only console that I mean, meaning this, the PS3, this is the only wheel that could take up to maybe two to three minutes to load a game. It's not your system. It's not your PC. It's just that is how the emulator is. Not to mention, again, not all the PS3 360 games will run flawlessly. I do have a lot of games on this. You're looking at 15 terabytes alone in PS3 and 360 ROMs. No, they do not all run. Vic, why even bother with it? That's just how it is. So as you can see right now, we're letting it go. I'm talking through it. And as you can see, it is compiling shaders right now, modules and all that. You just got to let it do its thing. Big thing I kind of suggest when it comes to PS3, this right here, what you see right now, compiling modules, it is now putting files into the emulator folder and into your ROM folder. That is why I always say I always try to leave at least 500 gigs available in the hard drive space alone. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in the background. So my suggestion is when you're doing PS3, try not to launch 30 different games, maybe play one or two games, focus on that, beat the game, and then continue on to the next one. Again, it's only PS3 and 360 that I'm suggesting this. PS2, PS1, GameCube, N64, Wii, Wii U, the Switch, that is, that's basic stuff. That's easy stuff. You don't have to worry about that. But PS3 and 360 is the one where, as you can see, and I'm not going to put a timer on it, but you could see the length that it took to just start the game. And Lego Indiana Jones launches. Cool. I'm not going to say that this game plays flawlessly, but if you do watch my other video with Hyperspin 2022, I do go in depth and talk about the compatibility list. This emulator is RCPS3. It no longer does like a escape key exit that's in the emulator. So you just gotta escape on the keyboard. I do have droid keys set to escape, but it kind of blocks it out and ignores it. But as you can see now, we are back. So that is one thing about the PS3. While I'm on the subject, let's talk about the, the Switch. Uh, we're gonna go down to the Switch real quick. Uh, Switch is awesome. He's got the new stuff. Like I put the MLB the show. I put the new Kirby on it. Um, so we're gonna launch that real quick. Excuse me. This way you can kind of like see it. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I passed it. So Kirby, long press A. And there you have it. It will launch. So now the big thing about Yuzo is that when it starts, it doesn't start in full screen mode. So you could press the back button and it'll bring up full screen mode. So again, it will launch like this. It's kind of cool if it launches like that because you could always go into like tools and change like the controller and all that. But I'm able to play it like normal. So now the only big thing that I want to mention about the Switch is you can see you just have to press the back button to do full screen. And here's what the only thing to keep in mind. You could long press the Xbox button 
The only thing is that you have to wait now 30 seconds. There's something happening in the background with Rocket Launcher and Yuzu is still exiting technically. So right now, I have no control. The best way to say it, and I did test it with using the keyboard and trying to relaunch. The best thing right now, it's gonna take about 30 seconds. Just wait 30 seconds and you will regain focus from it. Same thing with Yuzo. Yuzo used to do like a one button escape key to exit and now I had to add kind of a AHK file to exit. Now I'm back and as you can see now I'm able to navigate. So that's the only thing it's about the switch and the switchware. When you launch the switch and you're done playing it and you exit you will just run into this kind of wall for 30 seconds where you won't have control. You could control with the keyboard. I don't suggest doing that because if you try to launch another switch game you lose focus, Joyce the key isn't going to go to the right assignment and start. So that's really the only thing. Everything else, honestly, you're able, you're able to play, bounce around. We'll launch Battletoads of Genesis. This is just fine. It's It plays flawlessly. It's great. It's awesome. If I'm done playing it, long press that. It's really once you see the game exit, you have control. Once you see the game exit, I should say, let go of the Xbox button. It's awesome. The one last thing we're going to end it with is we're going to show real quick the Wii um, as far as changing the D-pad. So let me just show you what I mean. I know, for example, definitely it's Paper Mario that we have this little D-pad thing complete. because the game is requesting that you turn the uh, Wii mode. As you can see there, see there, hold the Wii mode sideways. So again, standard way this is set up is regular. Up is up, down is down, left is left, right is right. Now that it wants you to hold it vertical, right is up, left is down, up is left, and it gets kind of chaotic from there. So as you can see right now, I'm pressing up, but it's moving to the left or to the right. So if I turn the stick, if I want to go up now, see, I turn the Xbox controller, I'm able to navigate. But I mean, you technically could play like this, but no, you can't. Let's do this. Okay. So what do we got to do? Let's exit out. We're going to exit out of Hyperspin altogether. So long press the yes, we're back. And we're going to go into Dolphin. I have the emulator right there. You only have to do it for this one system. There's no other system that does this. Once you're in Dolphin, you're going to click this controller. And we're going to aim for the Wii modes. There's also a cool thing I should note about the Wii modes here. You do have two players enabled. I'm going to launch Mario Galaxy, but we're going to leave everything normal. We're going to go to player one. And we're going to press configure. And basically, we have to focus on this, the D-pad. What easiest thing to kind of assign it now is turn your controller this way and now map up, down, left, right. I'm not even on camera. So I, I'm controller sideways, up, down, left, right. That's what I did there. So it's just easy that way. I'm going to press OK. I have to exit the emulator. Make sure you exit the emulator. If you don't exit the emulator and you try to launch Hyperspin and you try to play the game, it won't launch because your emulator is open. Let us now launch Super Mario, Super Paper Loading Mario, complete. Say. And now I can play this normally, holding the controller normal, and we're able to navigate correctly. So just to show you, if I go right, left, down, up, down, up. I'm good to go. This is exactly how I need it to go. Awesome. Escape out. When you want to, I mean, me personally, it's very rare. It's not rare. It's occasional games. I would now go back to Dolphin, configure my player one, and then assign back the way they should be. So it's north, south, east, and west. Again, if I flip the controller, east, west north south that's the way it should be uh for the wiimote flip but again i'm gonna play it like i normally should north south west east awesome done real quick and then we're basically kind of 
done. I'm going to launch Hyperspin again, and I'm going to launch um, Mario Galaxy. I don't know if all the games for the Wii do this, but I did notice it with Super Mario Galaxy. I'm going to launch Super Mario Galaxy. Loading complete. Basically, what I'm trying to get at right now is that we have two players enabled in Dolphin. If I play Mario Galaxy, the second player, player two, his like cursor is going to be on the screen the entire game. So to alleviate that, you might want to go into Dolphin and basically turn off player two. I played Mario Galaxy a lot, so I didn't notice that. So you could kind of see it there. Again, right analog stick is as if you have the Wiimote in your hand. That player two star is going to stay there the entire game might be annoying to you it was annoying to me so we're gonna exit out again holding my right trigger we're gonna exit out i'm gonna go into dolphin controllers and now with this wii 2 i'm gonna put it to none and press ok and now that is it player 2 that star is no longer there if you're done playing and you want to enable player 2 you have to wiimote change it to emulated wiimote that is it the only thing I'm kind of upset about, but it's really Dolphin, the emulator. Exiting full screen doesn't bring up this menu. So I kind of wish that it would just let you, you know, let's say you launch the game and then just kind of put a keyboard shortcut in. It won't let you do that. I, I sat here for like an hour trying to see if there is a keyboard shortcut to bring up and change controllers. And there just is none. There's, there's none. There's a way to connect a Wiimote, but it's it, there's just nothing. There's, there's no way to bring up kind of like a tools controller thing. And maybe they'll make it in an upgrade. But that is the only thing, honestly, I noticed. So I always leave it as two players on. Again, you play it. You want to disable player two. That is fine. That is the only thing, really. So again, out of 91 systems, you have... Obviously, the PS3 360, let it launch. Actually, because we're talking about it real quick, I'm going to relaunch that Indiana Jones Lego. And you're going to see now how, f not fast, but it will load the game quicker because we already compiled the shaders to it. So I'm going I'm to go into PS3. Uh, I believe it was Lego Indiana Jones. Right. I'm going to long press this. Loading complete. And let's see. We're going to probably see like... RCS PS3 launch quickly and then we're gonna probably see there you go so compared to when we first did it boom there you go long press oh no I'm sorry remember it is PS3 so escape key exit you might get an error on RC PS3 that says problem closing but that's it that is honestly it. Lewis, man, I appreciate your patience. I hope you enjoy the hell out of it. Um, I'll talk about the gun games real quick. So again, gun games, these are all, the gun games in this are all arcade, PC arcade games. And then I do have light gun games. This is for the Wii. I didn't put the Wii light gun games in the gun game wheel because some of these games do, Sorry, they do need the nunchuck. So using like the aim track, it won't detect the nunchuck. So for example, like I know for a fact, like Call of Duty, it so it's not really gonna work with aim tracks or your light guns. But I wanted to keep the Wii separate. Uh, again, I believe it's 173 or 200 and something games. It's it's a lot. I have it on my page. I now can't end this video without actually showing it. So let's just see real quick the gun game wheel. I can't end the video like that, not knowing my numbers. <laughs> so real quick, let's see. So shotgun game is my gun game wheel. Again, this is all arcade and PC games, some PS2 games. The NES with Duck Hunt is on this. Um... A lot of stuff. I could just tell without even loading it. It says here 167. So 167. And if I go to my Wii Gun Games, 70. 167 and 70. That should be one. 
167 and 70 is 237 like on games. Granted, yes, some of the Wii games won't work correctly because you need a nunchuck, but goddamn, there's a lot of gun games to it. Last thing to mention because we're talking about the gun games for Lewis, um, only connect the aim tracks when you are playing the gun games. If you're going to play like Super Nintendo, make sure the aim tracks are disconnected. Unplug them because they will screw up controllers. It'll think your Xbox controller is player 3 and player 4. If you're going to use gun games, you're going to play gun games, you're going to play the light guns, plug the light guns in. If you're not going to play the light gun games, take the light guns out. Honestly, guys, I don't know what else I could possibly say. I do have TeamViewer on this, so if, I, if you ever have any issues, we could TeamViewer in. I could go into your computer and take over and control it and edit stuff. Easy peasy. Last thing, he is talking about the aim tracks. I do have the Ultimark program right here. You're going to put the guns in, and we are going to run calibration. So when you do get it, again, the sensor bar has to be above the top of your TV. Press calibrate, it's gonna ask you to shoot the top left, top right, and then the bottom middle, and your gun is calibrated. You do that one time for both devices, both guns, and you're set. All other light guns and all that are calibrated. You don't have to worry about anything. Whoo! Damn, I need some water. Honestly, guys, that is it. Lewis, man, I gotta give you big props. Thank you so much for your patience. Again, I do a lot of these Ultimate Consoles. I rarely film them because I want to bang them out. I want to send them out. I always try to make videos on everything, but Lewis, man, I appreciate it. Honestly, with your build, I'm taking the time with it because you sent me aim tracks. Um, so I'm glad to now have a gun wheel, and uh, it's perfect. Again, you said you're, you sent your PC at the perfect time. Shout out Mystery Encoder, Don Lenny, all those guys working on the light gun stuff, two-player Blue Estate, two-player House of the Dead remake. Whoo, man. Dude, Lewis, man, I hope you enjoy your ultimate console. Damn, man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh.